Good morning, good morning to all of you. Good morning, come on in the room, come in the room. Come in the room, this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in this day. Good morning to all of you. Come in the room, come in the room. The Lord is great, he's powerful, he's mighty. Good morning to all of you. That's right, come in the room. It is time for us to give the Lord our first and our best praise. It is time for us to magnify him. He is good, he is awesome, yes, he is all of that. And then some, it is time for us to bless him. But there is nobody greater than the Lord. Nobody. I mean, you can look all over. You can look everywhere you want to look. Yeah, but you can't find nobody who is like him, who is powerful like him, who is loving, who is kind and compassionate like him. Oh, yeah, you can't find anybody like the Lord. Yeah, you can find anybody that can treat you like he can. Good morning to you, Sister Sherilyn. Good morning to you, Sister Miller. Sister Nibby, good morning to you. God bless you, Sister Sherry. So good to see all of you this morning that are joining this morning meditation. The Lord is great. He promises to... Keep his hand up on us. He promises to bless us. Good morning to you. Yes, to all you that are joining, coming on in the room, let me know that you are here. Greet me as you come in. Greet one another as you come into the room. Let me know that you came to bless the Lord this morning on this great Friday morning. Yeah, it is cold outside. It is blistery in the place that we are in. Good morning to you, Sister Cynthia. Maybe some of you where you are in other parts of the world, it's not as cold. It's not snowy. Yeah, but where we are, yeah, we've got some snow. We've got the... No, uh, we've got, I got that call again this morning, yes, that the schools are closed where we are, and um, we know we're trying to make sure that everybody stays safe, that the kids stay safe and uh, healthy. Good morning to you. Yes, Sister Terry, so good to see you this morning. Good morning, yes, good morning, Sister Lenora, so good to see you this morning as well. If this is your first time, let us know that's your first time, and we will greet you the Tina Patton Ministry way, Amen. Glory to God. Listen, I'm going to go before the Lord in prayer, and then we're going to get right into what the Lord has for us on this morning. Father God, we just bless you. We praise you, O oh God, for who you are. We praise you, Lord God, for you are King of kings, and you are Lord of lords. God, you are the great I am. Lord God, you continue to heal us, God, and you continue to bless us, O oh God. So we thank you, Lord God, for this word this morning. We thank you, Lord God, most of all, for waking us up. For you didn't have to do it, O oh God. But we thank you, God, you saw it as part of our plan, that we would have another opportunity, God, another chance to be a part of your kingdom. Not only that, God, but another chance, God, to wreak havoc in the devil's kingdom. Another chance to show the world how powerful you are through the things that we do. And God, not only that, another opportunity to receive your abundance and your love and your grace, oh God. We thank you, Lord God, for continuing to shield us from the hand of the enemy. And Lord God, for the works of darkness that have been moved out of our life. We thank you, Lord God, yes, that we have faith to believe that you can do anything. That you can do the impossible, oh God. Whatever it is that you need to do in our life, we have the ability, Lord God, to believe that you can do it. And you can do not only that, but you can do exceedingly and abundantly above all we can ever ask or think according, God, to the power that lives inside and works inside, my God, of us. So we thank you, Lord God, for this word that shall go forth. And we thank you, Lord God, that you shall do with it what you know, God, it shall happen, that needs to happen with it, oh God. So pray, Lord God, that you will bless us, pray that you will heal us, oh God, and give us every great and mighty and powerful gift, oh God, that, that you want to give us, oh God, that we can lean on you, yes, that we can depend on you for all of our works, all of the things that we recognize got to be a part of the kingdom of God. We bless you, God, for all things in Jesus' mighty, mighty name. We pray, amen, and bless the Lord. Amen, people of God. Good morning to all of you that are joining. Yes, we just bless God for his word. We bless God for his spirit of peace that rests upon us this morning, on this great Friday morning. Good morning to you, Sister Jan. Listen, this morning, <laughs> this morning, glory to God, I'm, I'm talking about, you know, um, uh, you got to go. I hate to see you go, but you got to go. Um, it's a part of us, part of us, and what I'm talking about this morning is that flesh, that fleshly thing that we don't want to leave, that fleshly thing that we don't want to get rid of, the fleshly thing in part of us, the thing that part of us that uh, we struggle with, that we struggle with these things that are, are happening with our flesh, but this morning I want us to know that that has to go, that has to be a, uh, far from us, my God, that we can walk and live the righteous life that the Lord has for us, the powerful life that the Lord has for us. We've got to, yeah, I hate to, I hate to see you go, but you, we got, but you got to go. I hate to see you leave, but you got to go. You know, sometimes there's some things in our flesh that we're trying to hold on to, and we're trying to hold on to them. Why is that? Simply because we don't know that they're, they're causing us danger, and we don't know that they're causing detriment to our very lives. And we don't know, my God, that they're hindering the walk that God has for us. 
And you know, sometimes we think about the things that God has for us and, and rec we don't recognize, my God, that God has, has power for us. He has promotion. He has elevation. And yeah, God is not trying to stifle your, your, um, your, your joyfulness. He's not trying to stifle you enjoying life. My God, as a matter of fact, he wants you to enjoy life better than you thought you ever could. And so because of that, there are some things that just got to go in your life. They just got to go. Paul talked about it in Romans um, chapter 7. Um, and um, I'm going to start with verse number um, 15. And he said, for what I am doing, I don't understand. <laughs> but what I will to do, that I do not practice. But what I hate, that I do. He said, what I will to do, what I want to do. He said, I don't practice that. But what I hate, that's the thing that I do. And what is Paul is saying? He said, it's something about me, something about me. He's, he said, listen, there's something about me, some things in me that's got to go. I said, I don't know what's going on. He said, I don't understand it. But then he says in number 16, if then I do what I will not to do, then I agree with the law that it is good. He said, if, if, I, if I keep doing the stuff that I don't want to do, then I get in agreement with the law. I get in agreement with the enemy. I get in agreement with the world that that must be good. If I hate to see you go flesh, but I got, but you got to go because I can't get into agreement with the world's way. People of God, we've got to stop being in agreement with what the enemy wants us to do. I did a meditation the other day, talked about you got to take a stand. That was yesterday. Mordecai, you got to take a stand. If you get in agreement with what the world wants you to do, if you continue to be in agreement with that, what is Paul saying? Paul is saying, then that means I agree that it's good. But then he goes on to say, but now, but now it is no longer I who do it. He said, but it's a sin that dwells in me. Paul said, listen, that's not me. That's the sin. He said, for I know that in me, that is in my flesh, nothing good dwells. Flesh, I hate to see you go, but you got to go. You've been, you've been rolling with me for a long time. You've been rocking with me. You've been my ride or die for a long time, flesh. But today is the day you got to go. Because what he's saying is, listen, don't know nothing good dwells in my flesh. He said, for to will is present with me. What I want to do is present, but how to perform what is good. He said, I don't find. Paul said, for the good that I will to do, I do not do. But the evil I will not to do, that's what I practice. Now, if I do what I will not to do, it is no longer I who do it, but the sin that dwells in me. Something in us, people of God, that keeps, keeps us from walking the way God wants us to walk. Paul is saying, listen, it's not me. It's, 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 a, it's, it's somebody else. It's something else that's causing me to do the thing that I do. I got to keep on going here because I got to get to the good part. He says, I find in a law that evil is present with me, the one who wills to do good. For I delight in the law of God, according to the inward man. But I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is my members. Flesh, I hate to see I, you, I hate to see you go, but you got to go. You got to get out of here. He says, oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? And then he says, I thank God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. I thank God. He says, so then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. What you're saying, Pastor Tina, what you're saying is sin, flesh. I hate to see you go. We've been, we've been, we've been together a long time. But now is the time, now is the day that we've got to part. We've got to separate because this thing that you're trying to do in me, oh yeah, good, goodbye, goodbye. The thing you're trying to do in me is you're trying to keep me from living the abundant life that God has for me. Pa Paul is saying here, you got to live a saved life and you've got to refuse to yield to the power of the enemy over your life. Paul is saying, listen, this, I'm torn between two things. He says, I'm torn. But yet while I'm torn, my God, he says, I recognize it's the law of God that I've got to be yielded to. It's the law of God that has the blueprint for my very life. He said, it's the law of God that keeps me from going to the way of the flesh. The, the flesh, he said, is sinful. 
it's, it's carnal means fl sinful, fleshly. He said, it's the sinful thing that causes me to move away from God. He said, but you know what? The flesh has got to go. Yeah, I, I hate to see you go because he says, because I, 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 I've leaned to your way. I've leaned to your way for so long. I've leaned to your way all of my life. Matter of fact, when I was born, I, was, I had I, I leaned to your way because I was born into sin. I was born into that thing. But he said, you know what? But that's my old nature. The Bible says, if any man is in Christ, he is a new creature and old things have passed away. He said, because when I was born, I was under bondage. And that's my, that's my old life. My God. But what Paul is saying here, unfortunately, my old life is still alive and well. Glory to God. It's, unfortunately, it's still alive and well. But he said, listen, but, but if I could just get to the part of my mind that's being, that's being controlled, listen, by my spirit man, by the God man. Then I listen, and then I can be separated from that sinful nature that I'm living in. Yes, because he said, listen, the flesh is always going to be wicked. The flesh is always, oh, come on here, somebody. The flesh is always going to want what it wants. The flesh is always going to want to go to the ungodly way. The flesh is going to always lean to the worldly appetites, as Paul's saying. The flesh is always going to be sold out to sin, is what Paul is saying. My God, the flesh is always going to be wicked. But what Paul is saying here is I got to not lean to the way of the flesh and lean to the way of, my God, the spirit. Because what happens is there, there is this old nature that we're dealing with. But the good news is that, come on, that, 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 that we are saved from that. We're saved from the evilness. How are we saved from it? Not of ourselves, people of God, because we weren't good enough to save ourselves. The thing here, Paul is saying is that my God, we, we may long for the wickedness. We, our flesh may long for the wickedness, but as long as we are longing for God, we can overcome. We, we can overcome it through Jesus Christ. There is still some fight in you, people of God. I know it gets frustrating, and that's what Paul is saying. Paul said, I just don't understand it. He said, I just don't understand what's going on with me. I know it gets frustrating, but all of us, my God, have to be able and willing to lean toward Jesus Christ, be willing to please God in everything that we do, but recognize, my God, that the fight is going on and there is a fight my God between the spirit man my God in between our flesh Paul recognizes that every time he tries to do good glory to God he said evil is always present Every, he said, every time I try to talk something that's good, every time I try to do something that's good, every time I try to think something that's good, Paul said, here come the flesh. People of God, listen, the flesh has got to go. We've got to kill the flesh. The Bible says we are killed all the day long, counted as, as sheep before the slaughter. Every day, all the day long. My God, if you are able to do something good, come on, it's a result of a battle, people of God. I know you're tired of fighting. Glory to God. What, who said that all my life I had to fight? I know you're tired of fighting people of God. But if you're going to do something good, you got to recognize, glory to God, it's going to be the result. I see you, Brother Armando. It's going to be the result of a battle that you're fighting, my God. It is. There, it's, it's, when you do good, have you thought about it? When you do good, is there some temptation not to do that? There's some temptation to do evil. You know, when you get when you get an opportunity, my God, to to bless somebody, is there a temptation not to do that? Is there a temptation sometimes to keep that thing for for yourself? Come on, it's sometimes it's hard to keep your motives pure. Sometimes it's it's difficult. But listen, I'm so glad because we are men and women of God. We are men and women of integrity. That good always wins out. My God, and, and the people listen to me, people of God. And this is what Paul is saying. The people, of Sister Lenora, who do not struggle with their sinful nature, those are the people who are already, they give over to the world. Those are the people that Paul was saying, you know, that, that I must count the worldly way as good. I must count the sinful way as good. Those are the people that are following the, their sinful nature. But listen, when, when you try to go against the flesh, when you try to go against the way the world wants you to go, there is always a struggle. How do you know that people, are, oh, come on here, somebody, y'all recognize it when people are trying to do good in the community, trying to do good, come on, on the job. It's always got somebody, always has, somebody always has something to say about it. It. They always want to talk about it. My God, let the people just do good. Glory to God. 
Let them do good. Don't don't always become the the um, thorn in somebody's flesh, my God, when they're trying to do good. You say, oh, I'm just trying to keep them humble. I'm just trying to, my God, keep them honest. No, what you're trying to do, my God, is cause a struggle in a battle where there necessarily does not need to be one. We recognize that sin is is constant. But listen, sin for us is a wicked companion. My God, you got to let go of that companion of sin and flesh in your life. Glory to God. Paul is saying, Paul is letting us know that this is what's happening to me. Paul is saying, I got somebody with me. And just like Paul, many of us have somebody with us. <laughs> Paul, Paul says, sin is dwelling with me. He said, my flesh is a wicked companion. But the thing, of, but, but what Paul is understanding and telling to us is whatever God has said because of the new Paul, Paul says, I love that. He says, I love what God has said to me. He says, I love how God has said he's going to give me grace. I love how God has said he's going to give me favor. Paul is saying, I want what God wants for me. He said, and since I want what God wants for me, Paul is saying it's worth the struggle. It is worth the struggle. We just like Paul got to hate the things that the, that the devil loves. We've got to hate the evil thoughts that are in our mind. We just like Paul need to delight in the way and the word of God so that we can live the, the abundant life that God has for us. And we know, my God, that we deal with it every day, but we've got to love the word of God so that we are not in captivity to the things of the enemy. Paul's heart was set on doing the will of God, but Paul was saying, every day I got to fight. Every day, Paul was saying, there is something that's trying to keep me into captivity. Matthew 26 and 41 says, the spirit is willing, but the flesh, my God, is weak. People of God, we've got to be honest with ourselves. We've got to be honest to know, my God, if our spirit is willing, but our flesh is weak, we've got to begin to say to our flesh, flesh, come on, you've got to go. Flesh, I've got to beat you down. Flesh, my God, you've got to come subject to the will of God that is in my life. You've got to say that my inner man Man wants God, come on, then the, and the fleshly man wants the world. We've got to say, we've got to want what God wants. We've got to move, move nor to those things, to what God wants, rather than allowing our flesh to bring us into bondage and bring us into captivity. And I'm telling you every day, my God, if we are not diligent in the struggle with our flesh, we will be defeated and I mean, drawn away to sin. We have to take a stand just like Mordecai, but we've got today. We're taking a stand against our flesh. If we don't do that, it will win over us. Paul has fought his flesh. My God, I know that we have been saved. The Bible says, by grace, through faith, are we saved? And, and our salvation is forever. But listen to me, people of God. We've got to fight sin every day. Because if we don't fight it, it will overtake, my God, it will overtake us. Paul was saying, listen, I desire to be free. I don't want to decay, be decayed. I don't want to uh, lose in this thing. But listen, he's saying, as I want to be free, I want to be free to love God. I want to be free to live in the harmony and peace that God has given to me. To give, And he's given that to all of us. Paul said, I'm a wretched, wretched man that I am. And sometimes, people of God, we're not honest with ourselves. We're not honest with ourselves to the point that we recognize that our, our flesh is trying to take us over. And because we don't recognize it or we're not honest with ourselves, our flesh will go ahead. It will take us over. But we got to recognize it and say, God, my flesh is trying to get the best of me. Listen, it's like it's two people. I'm not I'm not talking about you thinking that you, you know, bipolar or you're schizophrenic or any of that. But you're saying to God, listen, God, my flesh is trying to take over. There have some, been some experiences in my life that have caused me, my God, to yield to the temptations of my flesh. There have been some experiences in my life. Come on, I got to be honest. We've got to be honest with this thing because if we're not honest with our flesh, our flesh, my God, just like the enemy will try to manipulate us into doing more of what it wants us to do instead of growing more and more in the Lord. Be honest, my God, with yourself. Be honest, my God, and recognize that, listen, when you're honest, when the Lord comes, come on, when he comes for you, he's going to come for that fleshly desire inside of you. And as a matter of fact, he's going to come, my God, and deal with that fleshly thought, come on, that fleshly mindset, glory to God, and he's going to come and take over, glory to God. So listen, what we're saying here is you are not defeated by your flesh, but you've got to be able to say bye-bye. Come on, I hate to see you go. Listen, why I say I hate to see you go because Paul was saying there are some things
things, my, my, come on, warring, warring in my members. It seems like I want to do it. The stuff I don't want to do, why am I doing it? Listen, you're doing it because the flesh is drawing you and pulling you every day. But don't give up the fight. Don't give up the fight, people of God. And that's what Paul talks about all the time. Paul talks about fighting. He talks about running. He talks about not giving up, staying in the race. Because he recognizes that every day, people of God, all of us, all of us can be drawn away from the things of the flesh. We don't understand it. Just like he didn't understand it. But instead of just sitting down and rolling over and allowing, my God, the flesh to overtake you, don't make it easy for the flesh to have victory in your life. Fight. Fight the flesh. Fight sin in your life. Fight that. Fight the will to do wrong. My God, you got to be, you said, you, I know you said, Pastor Tina, I've been fighting all my life, but you got to renew, come on, that zeal. You got to renew your commitment to fight against evil. And you got to renew your commitment to live for the Lord. You do got to do that. Oh, yeah, you got, look, at. have you noticed, my God, even in your own life, when you decided to trust the Lord, do, do, do you know the difference in whether it's somebody that you saw or, or your own self? What was the difference? My God, the difference was, my God, you, you decided to leave one place and go to another place. You decided, my God, to, that you were going to abide with the Lord. You decided that when the Spirit of God came into your life, that your life was going to change forever. You decided that you were going to be a new creature. You decided, my God, that your focus was going to be on serving God and serving God alone. P Paul recognized, my God, that, yeah, we were sinners, but we were, we were under God, but we could not save ourselves. He recognized that. And so we know, my God, that yes, that God has given us a promise. That we have been delivered from the sentence of death, my God. We have been delivered from the sentence of sin. And no, we don't know. We no longer have to be lost to sin, people of God. But we can be with him. We can live in Christ. And Christ is the one that makes all the difference in the world. Come on in here, people of God. We can be in church. We can go to church all day. Yeah, we can go to church, my God, and we can still die lost. But when we go and be in Jesus, when we are in Jesus, the Bible says we are saved. We are secured in him because he is the only refuge. He's the one that we have. He's the one that we need. He's the one, my God, that gives us all, my God. All the power, all the power to do what it is that we need to do. My, 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 my God. The Lord is great. He is powerful and he is mighty. Oh God. Yes. So we got to recognize, my God, even in this time, in this season, that we're delivered from sin. We're delivered from the slavery of sin and what we are delivered to. We're delivered out of bondage to the, to the spirit of the spirit-filled life, to the law of the spirit-filled life. You're delivered, my God, from sickness. You're delivered from sin, but you're delivered to the where the Lord would have for you to be. And I'm talking about we're getting rid of our flesh. We're moving out of our flesh because the deliverance that we have is in God. You have a new life. You got to tell your flesh, you, you got to go. You want to go to a better life, a better life in him, a better life, a joyful life. A life that nobody else can give you. Nobody. We look to Jesus, who is the author and finisher of our faith. We look to Jesus, who gives us every great and powerful blessing. We look to Jesus for our healing. We look to him for our salvation. We look to him for the promises that he's given to us. And we don't lean to our flesh. Any man's in Christ. He is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Allow those old things to die. Bury them. Don't pick them back up again. When we yield to our flesh, we're yielding to destruction. But when we yield to the Spirit of God, 
We yield to eternal things. Father God, we just bless your name. We praise you, oh God, for who you are. We thank you, Lord God, that you're mighty, powerful. Lord God, and you are strong in our lives. Thank you, Lord God, for continuing to bless us, for continuing to help us, oh God, for continuing to let us know, Lord God, that there are certain things in our lives that we must get rid of in order for us to receive the abundance that you have for us, God. All of those blessings, God, that are laid up for us, oh God. We thank you, Lord God, yes, that they shall be given, oh God. They shall be, God, poured out to us. Pour them out, oh Lord God, as we, God, kill the flesh, as we deny our flesh and go to you, God, the Spirit of God. Help us, Lord God. Thank you for our deliverance. Thank you, Lord God, yes, for the obedience that you've given to the people of God. And most of all, Lord God, we thank you for how you're going to bless us and raise us to be the mighty men and women that you called us to be. Thank you for the compassion that you've given the people of God. And even though, Lord, we thank you for the favor, God, and the grace that you give to us each and every day, Lord God. For, Lord God, this is a new day. And every day, Lord God, that we get up, every day, we recognize, oh God, that none of us are perfect, but we recognize, God, but it's not by our works. It isn't by our power, God, but it's by the work of Jesus Christ that we come to live. It's by the work of Jesus Christ that we come to have what we have and come to be who we are, oh Lord God. And we thank you, Lord God, that you have made us, God, exactly like you want us to be. And because you've made us like exactly like you want us to be, oh God, we are unique in you, God, and we are powerful, oh God. So thank you for saving us. Thank you for your delivering power, Lord God, over us today. Now, God, I pray for those that are sick among us and weak, oh God. I pray my, right now, God, for Brother Jim. I pray, Lord God, that the will of God be done in his life. And Lord God, that you will continue to bless him, God, on every hand. Lord God, I pray for Brother Armando right now as he's going through his time of bereavement, oh God. God, comfort him, God, in this special time. Comfort him, God, and let him know, Lord God, that you don't make any mistake. And Lord God, you will wipe, God, those tears from his eyes. God, give him peace, God, to know, Lord God, that you have handled the situation in the way, Lord God, that you recognize that it is good for him. And we bless you, God, that you will do these things and uh, comfort the entire family in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, God, I bless you for all the people that are listening and watching, God, and waiting, God, for the manifestation of the word to come to fruition in their lives. Lord God, let it happen for them, oh God. Bless them, God, with a special blessing. Help them, God, to know, God, that you are God. And even in that, Lord God, those that are watching and waiting and looking upon them, God, give them, God, the power and the strength to recognize that, God, you are God. Let them come, God, from the north, south, east, and west, even to them, Lord God, that they may seek them for a word, and they may have a word of power, Lord God. Oh, God, designed just for them, oh God. Bless them and everything that they do. In Jesus' mighty name, we do pray, amen, and bless the Lord. Amen, people of God. This is the weekend. Listen, find yourself in somebody's church, even on someone's Zoom, but even better in somebody's church, because God has blessed you with great and mighty and special gifts. Yes, I know the flesh is raging, but you have the ability to call down the flesh. You have the ability to overcome what's trying to overcome you. Allow, my God, your gifts and talents to be used in the house of God, that you may build up the kingdom of God. Build some kingdom people by what you know and by what you have done, find yourself in somebody's church. If you don't have your own church and you're in our area, I invite you to 707 Sherman Avenue in the great city of South Bend, Indiana. Yes, thank you, Sister Donna. It is Giving Friday. Friday is Giving Friday. It's Giving Friday today. Listen, any con contributions that are made on today, you may have seen if you follow me on my Facebook page, that we are taking some children to Elkhart to see these three wonderful men who have overcome, three African-American men who've overcome um, situations in in their life, overcome obstacles as they were growing up, overcome environments and experiences that people thought they weren't going to make it. But these three young men have overcome those things and have become physicians. Three uh, black doctors who've gone out talking to the world about how you overcome things. Yes, it is a great uh, thing that we're going to do. And so we're taking them over to Elkhart on Monday night. Um, we already have started getting contributions in. So the contributions that we get from today, we will put those toward that um, event and activity so that we can take some young people to see, to hear, see and hear um, something that they can do for themselves um, come out. We, we need we need young people to know they gotta they gotta see who they can be. We need them to know that they can do better than selling drugs or, or using drugs. They can do better. Come on, they can be better than um, what it is that they've seen in their lives. They can be better than you know hearing gunplay um, in the in the street. They can do better than that, people of God. And we've got to be able to show them that. So we want to put our money where our mouth is, and 
um, make some contribution to that. It costs them twenty dollars to go to the event, and so for one, for one child, you can uh, give twenty dollars to that event. If you don't have the twenty, you can give ten and partner with somebody else. I'm all about partnership. If you don't have ten, you can give five and partner with four people. But we will make sure we get some children there. We have about a hundred and sixty dollars so far. We've had help with the transportation as well. We've gotten a van uh, donated to us that we can transport the children. And so I'm just thankful to all of you that has that have contributed already. And we are just thankful to God for what we're doing in this space that of, of our influence that we can help and impact somebody's lives. You're impacting somebody already just by your presence here on this live, by your conversation, by your participation in this live. You're impacting somebody somewhere in the world. And I bless God for you. I love you all with the love of Jesus. You have a wonderful day. Uh, yes, Sister Nibby, a uh, wonderful day. You go in peace. Glory to God.